singing a song. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Acts, Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21 will continue our series uh, working on the book of Acts. Acts chapter 21, I'm going to read verses 17 down through verse 22 and deal with a phrase, arriving at Jerusalem, and uh, that's where the Apostle Paul was headed, and we're going to pick up a couple of these these verses, and uh, Acts chapter 21, notice with me verse 17, it says here, and when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly, and the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Verse 20, and when they had heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Uh, And so we see in verse 22, what is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you, and uh, Father, we ask you again that you would meet with us tonight. And Father, we had asked that the Holy Spirit... Uh, would be in your word as it's preached. And Father, I pray that you would uh, have a a will and a way in the hearts of your people, those that are watching, those that have come out uh, faithfully tonight. uh, Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Be with your word as it goes out. I pray if there be one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they would make this evening tonight the night that they accept uh, Jesus Christ as their Savior. Be with your preaching. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. What we have here as we continue to look at the Apostle Paul, uh, he, he heads up to Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is quite a bit of a different setting than what he's been looking at or been viewing. Now, it's not going to be uh, anything, any strange thing when opposition comes because right around here, I don't think we'll get into too much of it tonight, but he is going to face a major opposition right here in Jerusalem, and it's going to deal with, it's going to deal with the law. Because the Apostle Paul, uh, Christ had revealed to the Apostle Paul the church, the church age and that mystery. And so a lot of those he was debunking. Notes. We're doing a study in Galatians and we're working and looking and realizing that the Apostle Paul is aligning the Galatian churches and their doctrine because they've kind of swayed to the law. There was Judaizers that have come down from Jerusalem, this place right here that we're looking at tonight, uh, to mess up the doctrine, to add them or put them back under the law. Well, this is a thing here, and we notice that we're picking up this theme automatically as he arrives. But let me stick with my notes. Uh, We'll see uh, when he does arrive here at Jerusalem at the end of his third missionary journey, it was the first time he had been in the city since the end of his first missionary journey, and uh, that was some 15 years before. So we see the arrangements were made for Paul to stay uh, at a home of an older disciple named Manson. And so we see, uh, number one, I want you to notice the reception, the reception of the believers. In verse 17, I believe it's very important that we see this. In this reception, we see they receive the apostle Paul. They did receive him. And uh, we see here in verse 17, and when we were come, uh, come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us Gladly, you see this note that uh, this is a proper spirit towards uh, towards Christian ministers is to receive them, and uh, a lot of times when uh, I remember in my younger somewhat of my younger days we did traveling as a family we would travel and uh, dad would preach in revivals or camp meetings or wherever the door opened and then we would go as a family part of that ministry and we would sing and uh, minister in what capacity that we could and so uh, but it was important and notice noteworthy that there were times that stick in my mind as when you would come into a church and you'd have never I'd never we'd 
never been there before. We were called and invited, and we would go to that church, and uh, you would, would see how you were received into the church by being just a, a guest, a guest family. And uh, some of them were very receptive. Some of the reception that we received, I won't ever forget the kindness that they showed toward the family, towards the minister and the preacher, and they were very good at that. There were other churches, though, <laughs> that we would go to that it was cold. You wonder why, why anybody was even at church. And uh, there might be one or two gracious people in those type of churches that were kind, uh, would say kind things. But here it's important, and notice it's noteworthy in our, in our Bible, in Scripture, that the, these brethren here in Jerusalem received the apostle. And it didn't mean that there wasn't going to be some difficulties here. And uh, that, that's coming, we'll see that. We always have seen this pattern dealing with the book of Acts and watching the apostle Paul as he goes from Iconium to Lystra to to Ephesus, and he goes on down through there. But every time he'd go to preach and establish a work, there would be opposition. Here it would come. Uh, and they, they would try to get a hold of him here. They almost kill him uh, a little bit later on. That's another message. But here we're looking at receiving. They receive the apostles gladly. I have a verse. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, they received the apostles gladly. And it was important. There were places where they did not receive them at all. And I spoke of that this morning in our message dealing with three basic type of individuals, or let me say three different types of, of uh, reception, what you're going to get. You're going to get some that will believe readily and receive. You'll have some that's kind of a little laid back and say, well, I want to think about this and we'll hear you again. So the scripture says, and you have the third that they just simply don't believe and they mock. And so you have basic three basic uh, types of receiving. Watch Romans chapter 15, what the Bible says here in verse 7. He says, Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Uh, there is times I remember when uh, uh, not only in, in, in traveling around the country and, and going from church to church, that was always kind of scary for me. Uh, I was always, I wasn't much of an extrovert, kind of outward going, it's kind of kept to myself. So it was scary, go to a new place. Uh, it was nice going with family because you had that support, that support factor, that support group. Uh, but uh, and not only in traveling, but in our church, we always try to be very gracious or kind to people that would come in. I'll never forget when Brother Michael Poole, I believe it was, years gone by, I think it was a Wednesday night, it's either Sunday night or Wednesday night, typical, kind of like tonight, just kind of the normal crowd, and uh, Dad began to preach and teach, but Brother Michael Poole was a pastor of a church up in northern in, uh, Indianapolis, north of Indianapolis, uh, maybe Gary, Gary, Indiana, he's up in Gary, he's a little bit farther on up. And uh, he was on vacation and come to visit that church. Had never been there before. And I remember dad telling us kids, we were kind of older, could drive. And he said, now look, I want to invite this preacher over to our house. And it wasn't uncommon for that to happen in our household. We'd have missionaries come in. We'd have preachers come in. But I knew this guy. I knew he, he, we didn't know him. And uh, at least I didn't think so. And uh, so dad had told the girls, look, I want you to go ahead and make sure the house is clean. Uh, and make sure that uh, we have some food ready or prepared. And uh, mom would always make sure we always had food in the house. And so there would be something that we would prepare for them. And so we invited them over. I remember them coming over and uh, just fellowshipping and having some light food and getting to to know Brother Michael Poole. And uh, his testimony today said he had never really, that's, you don't find that today, uh, the hospitality or the reception today. Matter of fact, you're kind of leery sometimes. You don't know who you're entertaining. But the Bible speaks of it here. Uh, the Apostle Paul made note of it, and we should have a readiness of hospitality to receive uh, somebody that uh, is a brother or a sister in Christ. Say, well, I don't like what they wear. It doesn't quite matter what they wear. Say, well, I don't quite you know, know anything about them, so I'm not going to speak to them. Well, it's not really all about that. It's about receiving them. According to verse 7, Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. It's kind of like Christ gives us the example, and we should follow suit in the name of our Lord. There's another verse you'll find in 1 John chapter... 1 John, I have 1 John uh, 7 and 8... Uh, and it says, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. 
And so you're, we're, we're to be fellow helpers. We're not in competition. We we're, we're, should never have that air or that attitude. Uh, and uh, I, we found that out traveling, even as a young man, traveling and looking at other preachers. And there were some preachers, we called them untouchables. They'd walk in. They had a, like their, their little thing, and they didn't talk to anybody. They were called untouchables. And you know, they, you, they didn't want to speak to you. They just kind of did their business. They were, if you please, kind of cold. But somehow, that evening, they were going to get up and minister to you with that type of attitude. It was hard. It's hard to receive them. But uh, yet, here, the Bible says, no, we should have a, have a readiness, a heart of hospitality, of reception. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, because God is for that. But not only do we see the reception, let's go back. Let's go back to Acts chapter 21. I'll make sure I'm turning the right direction here. Acts chapter 21. We see the report of the apostles. Look at verse 18. It says, In the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. We see, watch, watch verse 19. And when uh, he had saluted them, he declared uh, particularly, uh, what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And we see Paul is received of the elder James here. Now, there was more than just one, but James seemed to be the senior elder here. As the half-brother of the Lord, I do believe, James held a special place of honor and respect in the church. And uh, This is also, uh, we, we find that he was the author of the book of James in the New Testament. James was the pastor of the church at Jerusalem. And we remember that, we even look at Acts chapter 15, uh, about, we can move, let's move back. Let's take a look, and I believe it's verse 13 and 1 in chapter 15. Uh, Acts chapter 15, remember, should jog your mind as the Bible student is, it should remember that there was the great debate about law versus grace. And they concluded that it was by grace, all of grace and not of works. And the spokesman the spokesman for the congregation or for the church or that assembly was James. And we find it in uh, Acts chapter 15. Notice with me verse 13. And after they had held their peace, James answered saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Uh, and what happens is what, what you got into, if you look at verse 19, wherefore my sentence is, this is James. I just uh, skipped to verse 19. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which uh, from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Uh, and you see here that he was the spokesman. And uh, you look at verse 22. Then pleased in the apostles and elders with the whole church uh, to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. Uh, and so we see here that James is, uh, seems to be the senior spokesman for this church in Jerusalem. And so we see the acceptance of James would have gone a long way towards quelling the unrest in this Jewish member of the Jerusalem church. You have to understand the Jerusalem church was a very big church, a large church, and a lot of their members were Jewish. It was Jewish. And the Jewish people, they wanted to hold on uh, to the Jewish ways and culture. And uh, we see that this acceptance of what God was doing through Paul and others in reaching the Gentiles was very important. And the Jews were kind of like, nah, we, we, want, we want them to assimilate into us and be Jewish, and we want them to proselyte to being Jews. And so they begin to even go as far in their teaching or preaching that, uh, that uh, you weren't fully saved until you had done that. That was wrong. That wasn't taught, and it wasn't commanded according to Scripture. And so we see that Paul gives God the glory for the victories, and we look at uh, back in our text, uh, chapter 21, look, look with me now. He is, he, Paul declares some things. Look, actually, Acts chapter 11. Let's start there. Move over to the left there. Acts chapter 11. Let's look at this. Paul gives the glory, uh, gives the glory to God here in these victories that he has and he begins to declare. Acts chapter 11, notice with me verse 17 and 18. He says this, For as much then as God gave uh, them the like gift, as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? And when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. And so they were struggling. Some of the Jewish people were struggling or the converts thinking that you still needed to be a proselyte Jew. And look, Paul says, this is not what was going on. This is 
not what was happening uh, in these Gentile cities that he was starting these churches. And he's saying God is, is receiving them. They're receiving Christ. And who am I to stand against the way of God? And so here we see that he gives the glory to God. Paul declared, Paul declared what happened, what happened meaning he drew out his story in a narrative form. He's, he, he spake particularly and give a detailed account of both the second and third missionary journeys. You say, what was he doing in verse 19 back in our text in chapter 21? What was he, what was he doing? And uh, so he's given a detailed account of these missionary journeys. And I have some dates here. The second missionary journey with Silas was from about 49 A.D. to 52 A.D. Uh, and the third missionary journey with Luke was from about 53 A.D. to 57 A.D. And so we see that this is important as Paul is doing these journeys. And so we finally come to where he's at Jerusalem. And uh, we, we, I won't, I'm not going to, I've almost already spoiled it for my next message, but there's some opposition that takes place here. But let me say this, let me, let's look at our third point. Look at verse 20 through 22. And we're going to see the rejoicing of the church, the rejoicing of this church. And I think there, there should be rejoicing in a church. If you get in a situation or in a place to where you come to church and there's no joy, there's no love, uh, there's no long suffering, there's no gentleness, then listen, you, what happens is you get cold and that, it, it, perme- it goes to everybody else. It doesn't just stay with, with one individual. It kind of spreads. And it's not healthy for a church. And uh, you either have some good, strong preaching, good, strong teaching, or something to purge it. I heard one preacher say one time, it's like penicillin to uh, uh, an, infect, an infection. you got to pump a little penicillin in it to draw that infection out or that dross out. That's no good. And so we're seeing here the rejoicing of the church. Notice with me verse 20. It says, And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. So he's going to bring this up, but there, we're seeing the rejoicing of this church. They rejoiced over the salvation of souls. Uh, I like what Luke says, Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. The Bible says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons uh, which need no repentance. And so the Bible is very clear that there is rejoicing in heaven over just one sinner. Uh, the pastor, Pastor Tom, he declared the lady, and I, I did see her come in, and she was speaking pretty earnestly to Brother Tom this morning before Sunday school that she had called on Christ for salvation. She had accepted Christ. And he said he'd been praying for that lady for some time. And so that was good news. There should be rejoicing over that. That's a good decision, a wise decision and the most important decision that we'll make. Uh, in this life. So we see here that they were rejoicing over souls in verse 20. But notice with me, there's something else here. Uh, They rejoiced in the establishing of churches. Now watch, uh, as we note the number of churches were established in Ephesus in Asia. And you'll see how the gospel begins to spread. I should have had a map, but you can see as the gospel begins to spread out into Europe. And uh, so we see here now what takes place, and they realize this is what's going on. Let me say this. The passion and heartbeat of a New Testament church is souls. So I thought it was, I thought it was singing. Singing's a part of what God has commanded us to do. But that, that's not the most important part. So I thought it was maybe being faithful to church. Well, that's good to do, and God tells us it, but that's not the most important. It's reaching lost souls. And uh, he speaks of Judea, uh, uh, he speaks of your, uh, your Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. You know, they say that a church becomes, uh, becomes more mature when they begin to reach the other parts of the earth, the other parts of the world. And when they're successful at that, they've reached that target that God has seen to place in the hearts of churches. And you can read about them in Revelations about what they do, what they've left, uh, and what they've clung to. And so we see that lost souls is most important. When we see a lost person accept Christ, it should bring joy to our hearts. Uh, There is no sign or trace of jealousy in the way that a church at Jerusalem here responded to Paul's report. 
And so that's not what was going on. They were rejoicing with him over this. Notice with me now in verse 21, uh, not only did they rejoice over the salvation of souls, but they rejoiced in the establishing of churches. And so we see in verse 20, And when they had heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law, and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought to not circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. After their, after their customs. And so we see here that the multitude gets kind of worked up here, but I want to dwell on this rejoicing. The apostles gave thanks and glor- glorify to God for this wonderful work uh, he had wrought among the Gentiles. So I believe that the Jewish people, some of them were still struggling with that the Gentiles were receiving Christ. And you'll find that. I've been in churches where, uh, I've, I've been in churches at a younger age where people begin to get upset because people were getting saved. And you would think, would that happen in church? Uh, I remember uh, such a person, an individual, I won't name names as long, long, long ago, but I remember making a statement in, in the whole church, stand up and say, there's just too many people getting saved around here. This is feeling uncomfortable. And you think, wow, what would happen is the pastor had kind of changed the scope of where the church was wanting to go soul winning. They were going all to the fancy houses going up there. Uh, but they, they, the pastor changed and said, let's reach right here. And there was a small subdivision right next to the church. Now, there, the, 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 rent, the rent district was, was low. Uh, and so, but there was working folk there. You know, they needed church. They needed Christ. They needed God. And it gave us an opportunity to minister, to have a better or fuller ministry to minister to those people than the people that really didn't need anything or want anything. So God opened the door and people began to come to church. And uh, I, I, you can hear the stories. They say, you know, we were never really invited into this church years gone by because it was always, you know, we just weren't good. We wasn't good enough to come to this church. And you see what happens? There was problems in the church and they had lost their love for winning lost souls. It didn't matter how much you make or how much you owe or how much you're worth or how, 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 how small or insignificant you might think you are. You still matter to Christ because it's all about souls. It's about souls. And we don't lose sight or focus on that. And uh, here the rejoicing, there wasn't any jealousy, but there was, there was rejoicing in the establishment of what the Apostle Paul was doing. And it was through the Gentiles. Imagine the Apostle Paul. He, he said his heart and desire was for his brethren. He was a Jew. He was raised up in that culture. He had been uh, trained at the feet of Gamaliel, I believe that was. And so he was a Pharisee of Pharisee. He was of the stock of Benjamin. And so he was tooled and geared for the Jewish people. But God says, no, I want you to go minister to the Gentiles. And imagine that, man. And then now, not only does he have to be introduced to working with Gentiles versus Jew, but then he's got to work with his Jewish brethren, like here at Jerusalem. And, you know, they're going to, there's some to struggle. I just don't think they're really getting saved. They're not keeping what we think they should be keeping. And you hear all kinds of stuff. Listen, stick with the word. The Apostle Paul was laid out that God indeed was working with uh, the Gentile people. And so we see they learned they had fellow believers in many cities all across the Roman Empire as what Paul begins to relay. So as this, as this rejoicing unfolds here, as the Jerusalem church receives the Apostle Paul, James begins to, to want to hear about his, his journeys and every little detail of how God worked. Right around the corner, we're not going to get in that tonight, but right around the corner, uh, there was going to be major opposition. And I can give you one, we've been studying Acts, now those have been following along. I'll give you one guess on where it come from. <laughs> It's not from the lowly people or the working people. It's from the religious crowd. And uh, we're going to unfold that, Lord willing, next week. Let's all stand. Uh, I want to just just real quick remind you of the Apostle Paul and uh, what he reported, how they received him as a brother, and then the rejoicing that goes on of the work of the ministry. You, need, you take part in that. Uh, I heard just real quick. Uh, the last couple of weeks, there was a missionary that we support that went to the foreign field and began to minister, and people are getting saved, souls are being won, and there's young converts that are surrendering to the ministry back to their indigenous people, and they're being trained. 
You say, oh, that all sounds good. That couldn't happen without you. That couldn't happen without this church and many other churches of like, like faith in mind. It can only be done because we support, we pray for them, and we try to support them. And you're a part of that. We're a part of that. And we should rejoice when we hear back that God has working uh, a mighty work in people's lives and uh, with other people, other nationalities. Brother Jeff, what are we saying tonight? Really?